This is Oral Stories. Welcome to Fast Track to 40. Like anything real, Fast Track to 40 has adult themes presented in adult language. Listener discretion is advised. And a good beverage is encouraged. From Oral Stories, Fast Track to 40, Episode 7. Hey, I got, uh... What the fuck do I got in here? How old is this thing? What is this? Eh, deal with it next week. Chocolate fudge brownie or... Ooh! Chocolate raspberry green tea. Chocolate! I can't hear you, so... Chocolate raspberry green tea it is! Here we go. A big carton of ice cream, and let's see. Baking competition, or ooh, K-horror, or K-crime, or K-sci-fi, or... Mop the talk? What? Mop the talk? Would you get out of there? I can't hear a word you're saying. Fine. What's with all the K? It seems I mostly watch Korean TV. Now my service thinks I'm Korean, or... Japanese. I mean, look at all the anime. Why can't you binge watch Schmitz like normal people? Not enough naughty tentacle action. Gross. Pass me the frozen sedative. Why is part of this green? Shut up, it's good. Just eat it. You're all depressed and shit. You're not really tasting anything anyway. As long as there's chocolate. That's the truth. There's only one universal cure for heartbreak. Wine. Chocolate. You're so pure. Do not eat all the chocolate. This is designed to be eaten together. You are a food snob in my time of need. I'm the one dying inside. Me. Let me eat the chocolate. Well, I'll make you die on the outside if you do. Where's the sympathy? We are on week two of you sleeping at my place. Where's my sympathy? Janet. It's not that I don't feel for you, but... I kind of caused this fuck up myself. Yeah. Come on. Cuddle puddle with ice cream. Lean on me. Thank you. Is Penny coming? She said she would. So she'll come when she comes. Have you heard from Dan at all? Nope. Sent some messages. Called. He's gone silent. He needs time. Uh, I have faith in him. He's got no reason to have faith in me. I think it's really over, Claire. I don't know. I wish it was Penny. She's really good at this emotions and saying the right thing, and, and I'm not. The only thing I can say is, I'm sorry, but don't give up hope, JJ. Why shouldn't I? I had a guy who never cared if I made more money than him, who'd surprise me with dinner, cared about me when I was sick. Janet, I mean, what did you do for him? What do you mean? I mean, you listed a lot of things he did for you. What did you like to do for him? What did you like about Dan that made you say, it's love? Um... Janet? Janet. Were you in love with Dan, or were you just in love with Dan being in love with you? Wow. Harsh. Uh, You're no penny. You cut right to the hard questions. I don't mean to upset you. No. No. Maybe what I need is for someone to kick my ass a bit. Clarity, I don't know. We kind of grew up together. I always liked him. It was a surprise when he seemed to like me. It it was just hard to accept that one of the cool rich kids didn't just want to be friends. He wanted something more. He was my calm point. Dealing with my parents' divorce, mom's second divorce and third. I just wanted someone who was all for me. He's not a stuffed animal. He's not a vending machine of good feelings. Dan's a human being, and frankly, a sweet, kind man who dotes on you. 
I'm not telling you what to do, but he's a good person. If you just love him as a friend, he deserves that uh, clarity. And if you are in love with him, then he deserves to be treated as more than a resource for you. He's got to be getting from you, too. I think that's telling me what to do. No, this is. Get your head together. Get honest. If you were in love, I think you'd have said so already. Great. Good work, Clarity. Fucking amazing. Didn't you say stay out of people's relationships? Fucking A. This is the last one of my selections, boss of mine. You're right, yours. Good. Put that on your side and I'll put these on my side. Is this your order of preference, Richard? Yeah, no. Penny, I need to be sure of the criteria here. Physical attractiveness or total personality metrics? Ugh. Wait. I have an idea. There. On the left side of each picture, rate for attractiveness. Right side is for traits. Oh! (laughs) Good idea. Yeah. Yeah, this is coming together. I like it. My choices, your choices. Oh... We picked these two guys, although you rated him higher on attractiveness. I have a thing for jocks. Shoot me. Now what? Now we narrow it down to just the top three candidates. Penny? Hmm. Now, why am I in this? You don't expect me to pick my future baby daddy all by myself, do you? (laughs) Yes, I do. That makes perfect sense. But not that I'm not flattered that you recognize my good taste in people. But at the very least, this should be a mission for you and your girls. (sighs) <sighs> Janet's in a crisis. Clarity has her hands full with helping Janet through her crisis, and I have... Yes, you. Finish the sentence. You cannot be serious. Darts? Why not? Can't be any worse than the bullshit of measuring the scientist guy versus the engineering guy versus the CFO on traits. I am st- duck on what matters when picking from a sperm catalog. You should try to meet them in person. Mm Mm-mm. Give me a dart. I'm jealous of the cheekbones on your fourth pick. There. Right in the cheek, Zoolander. Blue steel that. In person isn't possible, I asked. I haven't actually told Clarity and Janet yet that this is my big goal. Ow. You got my second right in the eye. There a reason you haven't told them? Hard to say. Move back. You're in my throwing space. Not yet. I am targeting this guy's dimples. I always wanted dimples. Feel my wrath, hedge funder. Left dimple, we hardly knew ye. My turn. That guy with the perfect hair. Are we shallow? Every one of these guys is, like, really good looking. Hmm. Everyone is a little bit shallow. Coming for you, hair guy. Miss the hair but definitely opened his third eye by force. (gasps) Pen, what if this is like some voodoo shit and these dudes are all having headaches and eye pain? These are your future child's potential fathers. We can't harm the sperm bearers. This is so hard. I've slept with people with less stress. It's one thing to feel a connection enough to screw, but this, this is really important. Aren't you connected to, what, three guys right now? Why not one of them? You do like them enough to date them. (sighs) Dating is for me. It's for my pleasure, my fun. I like them, we get along, we have good sex. But none of them feel like my person. My person who I want to have kids with. If any of them met someone, fell in love, and became off limits, I'd be fine. I'd send them with a mazel tov and a smile. Unusual, but I get it. I have movie friends, hiking friends but I haven't met the person I want to share all of that with, yet. (laughs) That's why we get along. Basic understanding. I like you, Richard. Not just as an employee. Somehow, we got this, like, friends and but boss employee thing to work. Four great years, Penny. I like you, too. We have a good work chemistry. And I am really great at my job, which helps us both in the future. What's your plan for the future with me, Richard? 
I plan to ride the Penny Eisenstein gravy train all the way to your streaming reality show that you'll host for 10 seasons in your next 15 years as podcasting host. <laughs> Glad you have a long-term future planned with me. Have to know talent to survive. And you got it. I do. You're about the only guy I have long-term plans with. Want to father my baby? I'm only responsible for teaching your child poker, sound engineering, and whiskey drinking. Mm, wait until they're five, okay? Got it. Another round? Guy with the most face holes wins the baby baster trophy. Oh, what time is it? Ooh, it's getting late. Girls night in at Clarity's. Lock up when you leave. All right, see you tomorrow. So, what are you going to do in this scene, guys? Let me see. Oh, yeah, that guy is a bastard. You give him a right hook. That's exactly right! Uh, no pun intended. I really like this. I turned out to be an undercover detective. So much better than that lame waitress designing a fashion line thing. <laughs> I know, what was I thinking? I know absolutely nothing about fashion. Hello, B and HLM, this project's little Greek chorus. We prefer the term muses. Huh. You know nothing about crime, but this caper part came out pretty good. I once stole grapes when I was lost on a shopping trip with my mom. Watch out, everyone. We got a gangster here. I see the fact that we're about one-third through the screenplay means my subconscious chooses now to start dunking on me. You're feeling good. Confident about what's on the page. Admit it. You're in an actual good mood. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. And... I'm not going to spoil it for myself with any self-deprecating humor. So it worked. What? Putting some effort into your own love life. Getting a little something-something? I've been on a couple of dates with Jason and a couple with Aaron. The only something-something I've gotten is dinner and a couple of coffees. It unblocked something, for which I am grateful. Same. Honey, I'm home. I'm in my office. We're Audi 5000. Later. I'm in my office. Hey, what's with the working? I thought we were relaxing with our girl to help her heal. We, uh, had a little disagreement. Ooh. Not talking to each other right now? No, nothing that harsh. I just didn't want to say anything more and go from putting my foot in my mouth to swallowing so much alike I could kick my own ass. Which makes her staying here for company a little awkward. I might have been a little blunt on the Dan situation. Totally my fault. I apologized. But I felt she deserved to watch what she wants and eat all the ice cream. Well, not without us. Especially not the ice cream. Come on, let's work this out. Um, I could probably be on a roll writing now. <laughs> that means you're not. Besides, I have an announcement for the both of you. Interest peaked. You could get comfortable, jammied up, and what have you, and when you're ready, holla. I will write until then. Fifteen minutes. Yes, Mom. Penny, I cannot believe the brilliance of a red wine float. I cannot believe you guys ate all my chocolate. Shh, it's for a good cause. Of pass me more muscat. Sure, sure, just sprinkle wine on my comforter. Look, Grandma, just because you're fully sober is not due to my lack of trying. <laughs> Grandma! <laughs> Come on, Claire. I will even do the laundry for you if we spill. Add a little more on mine, Pen. <laughs> oh, this one. I love this show. It's in Korean. Yes, and that means every person on it is gorgeous. Uh, how rude. All right, you drunk hens. Settle in and let the full girls' night in commence. How's Project Janet, future CFO of Megacorp? Hmm? Uh, you know, the Dan thing drove it right out of my mind. The plan is not to talk about the big D. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a big D, and I want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, I miss that, too. Way more than I needed to know. Focus, Ms. Biz. It's going good. Funny, funny thing. 
There's nothing I can do about my personal life, so I just work. All these plans, the ideas I have to expand the business. Did I tell you they are taking up my new employee retention proposal? We are going to have improved wages, save on training and childcare, baby. Next year, I will be making room for that best place to work trophy. Uh, Dan would be so proud. We are proud of you. You should be proud of you. I am. I I just want to share it with my girls. I can see myself in that directorship more and more every day. Yep, every day. But I'm a little worried. Worried? Who's worrying that Janet Jackson, future logistics exec... Ex... Ugh, ex... Ugh, head honcho. My boss, Gary, keeps adding himself to my presentations, my reports, my plans. I think he's eyeballing my directorship. I can hex him. He'll have the worst case of anal warts in human history. Just get me some hair. How is she going to get hair? Yoink that puppy from any hairy appendage you can, Janet. (laughs) Be excellent at work and steal hair from my boss for clarity to hex him. Might be the wine, but this sounds sensible. Year 40 goals on track. Well, speaking of our pre-40 goals, I know you were both wondering... Oh, we get to know. Yes. Well, we're all soused, except for you, and so in vino veritas rules. Excellent. Let me sip more of this amazing float and you spill. Ladies, I'm going to be a mom. (gasps) You're pregnant? Watch the sheets. Watch the sheets. Yeah, just busted out with, I'm going to be a mom. It was a mess, Aaron. (laughs) You're kidding. She's pregnant? No, that's the thing. She's decided she wants to be a mom, but solo. Anyway, we're going to help pick out the donor. She wants us to vibe on this. Vibe? Hey, we have a good group instinct. Tender, but for sperm donors. Well, the friend senses will tingle at the ones with shitty traits. Oh, is that how you wound up going out with me? Penny didn't tingle. semi sorta. She got the opposite tingle. You made a good first impression. Riding in like a white knight with paper towels. I am really good with paper towels and rescuing beautiful damn women. (laughs) Next date. We should test that. (laughs) Why wait? I can spill something on you right now. No. But uh, I do want us to go somewhere else rather than a meal or coffee. Oh, we've graduated past the simple date to maybe a day date. Yeah, why not? Longer than three hours allows us to suss out if we annoy each other just the right amount. I like you. You don't hold back. You're blunt, but not in a bad way. I don't think I've ever been with a woman who just blurts out what they want like that. I think women are clear on what they want, but I haven't dated any, so I don't really know. And I like to be direct. We're about 40, so why waste time? (laughs) Then trust the scientist with the empirical data. Anic data. Fair. I want to do more with you, too. There's a great place I hike that I'd like to share with you. How does next Saturday sound? Yes. Oh, wait. Can we do Sunday? I have plans on Saturday. Can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Fire away. Are you still seeing that other guy? I'm not trying to set limits on you, but like you said, why waste time? I feel like if we're going to take this relationship to something more serious, okay... I guess this is just me trying to figure things out since I think we're compatible. I'd like to know if something more serious is in the cards or if this is more of a friends plus thing. Uh, oh. Please leave your message. Hey, P. It's JJ. I just got done at the gym. Sorry. We can meet up tomorrow. I'm going to walk back home now. No, I'm going to stop in at the fire walk and grab some dinner, then walk home. I'm doing okay. Not great, but okay. 
don't worry. And I am giving Clarity a break from me since we dropped wine all over her sheets. I'm gonna buy her new sheets, don't worry. It's on me. Janet. Dan. Uh, can I, uh, may I walk you home? You've been listening to Fast Track to 40, written and directed by Georgia McKenzie, produced by Camille Johnson, executive produced by Inia Fong, starring Katie Ritz as Penny Eisenstein, Heather Summers as Janet Jackson, Tony Jackson as Dan Owens and Rod, Christopher Watkins III as Aaron Mills, Justin Van Cho as handsome lead male, Gabrielle Soli as beautiful lead female, or B, and other voices by the cast. Music composed by John Ruder. Sound design and editing by Alexa Ruvalcaba. And recorded at Shane Salt Productions in Hollywood. Like and subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss the next episode. Or visit us at oralstories.com. Check out Bonnie Screws Up and Upper River, other podcasts from Oral Stories.